Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we are working on the assigned homework problems for uh, from the digital study guide for chapter 10, the group B, exer the group B exercises. All right. Note, accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong, that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help if you don't understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still don't understand the concepts, then either email or telephone an instructor to get help with that understanding. Alright, so we're on 39 here. And it says accounting for stock splits. All right. So Schmidt's instruction had the following stockholders equity at January 31st. On February 28th, uh, the construction company split its stock four for one. Make any necessary entry to record the stock split. Right. And then prepare this uh, shareholders, the stockholders equity section, of the balance sheet immediately after the stock split. All right, so I'm not going to. Um, write this out okay um, I'm not going to reproduce this here stockholders equity section okay um, as far as making an entry to record the stock split um, we don't need to make an entry right because all we're doing is just you know um, we're just manipulating numbers here okay um, we're changing the par value and the number of shares. Okay, that's all we're doing. So, um, you know, yes, you know, it has to be known that you know there's a stock split. So yeah, you have to declare the stock split and it has to take effect. And but there is no entry because all you're doing is just taking, <laughs> you know, you're taking your common stock and you're you know affecting your common stock. So you don't need an entry. What does change, and you're not affecting the, the dollar value either, okay, of the paid-in capital or uh, the, the common stock itself. Because remember, all it is, in simple terms, if I have 100 shares at, say, um, $10 a share, all right, that's 1,000, right? Well, let's say it's a two-for-one split, all right? So two-for-one means we're going to divide the number of shares in half, divided by the two means we have 50 shares and we double right multiply the dollar value of ten dollars by two at 20 right and that still equals the thousand dollars so there is no change in the dollar value of um, the the common stock that we have so if we have a four for one split all right we have two dollar par and eight hundred thousand shares so the only thing that's going to change here on this stockholders equity is we're going to take the now remember it's four for one right so we're going to take the two dollar par and we divide it by four which means now the par value is fifty cents so the two dollars becomes fifty cents right and the eight hundred thousand shares okay um, we multiply that by the by four so now we have 3.2 million shares. So the 800,000 shares becomes 3.2 million, right? And that's the only change that's made on the stockholders' equity of the uh, the balance sheet, right? That was simple. I don't know why the why it, uh, they said it's going to take 20 to 25 minutes to do this problem. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know why, you know, that long. But anyway, so next problem. Um, all right. Accounting for stock issuance, splits, and treasury stock. We consider each of the following transactions separately from every other transaction. All right, issuance of 58,000 shares, purchase of uh, 1,100 shares of treasury stock, issuance of a stock dividend, sale of 300 shares, and a stock split. 
identify whether each transaction increased, decreased, or did not change total stockholders' equity. Okay, so um, an issuance of, let me make this just a little bit bigger here, and I'm going to move it. Okay. So an issuance of 58,000 shares of $14 par common at $22. Okay, this is going to increase um, our shareholders' equity, right? Um, because we are issuing, we're selling those number of shares, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, we're issuing those number of shares. And that would be in the amount of um, 58,000 shares at uh, $22, which would be about a million two seventy-six. Okay, so that's going to increase our equity. So I for increase. Right, B purchase of uh, 1,100 shares of Treasury stock. Right. So whenever we buy treasury stock, we're taking the uh, number of shares off of um, off of the market. So we say that's um, we're going to decrease our stockholders' equity. Right now, the 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 solution says it's a decrease, um, but it's only a decrease if we retire it. Okay, meaning we buy it and then we take it off of uh, we 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 just buy it and then we just retire it. All right, so it's no longer available. That decreases our stockholders' equity. Um, but if we're going if we buy it back and then we we're going to resell it, it's it doesn't have any effect on the stockholders' equity because we're you know what we're, if we're talking about stockholders' equity. I'm talking about the uh, total stockholders' equity. I'm not talking about the uh, price of a common stock, the value of a common stock, the value of a preferred stock, or the value of treasury stock, um, or the effect on the retained earnings account. I'm talking about total stockholders' equity. So if we buy the treasury stock and we retire it, yeah, it decreases our stockholders' equity because we're uh, making that no longer available. But if we uh, buy it back and then we have intention to, to sell it back into the market, then it doesn't change uh, the total stockholders' equity. Right. So C, issue, issuance of a $10, 10% stock dividend. For the dividend, 550,000 shares at $1 were outstanding. Market value was 3 at the time of the dividend. Right. So um, if we're issuing a stock dividend, remember, stock dividends, so I don't have to pay attention to any of this other stuff here. Remember, the issuance of a stock dividend, all it does is it takes um, money out of retained earnings and puts it into you know common stock and paid in capital. So there is no effect on the total stockholders equity. If you didn't get that, you know, um, go back and watch um, the exercise 10-38 and you'll see um, the declaration and distribution of the stock dividend, and you'll see that it has no effect, right? Because it's all part of the, you know, we're just moving from one account to another. We're taking out of retained earnings and creating additional common stock and additional paid capital, which is paid in capital in excess of par, which is all part of the total stock, uh, stockholder's equity. All right, D, a sale of 300 shares of $1 par treasury stock for $7 per share. Okay, the cost of the stock was $4 per share. Okay, so that's going to increase our equity because the cost was $4 and we're selling it at seven, right? So if I had, just to give you an idea, common stock, doesn't matter about how many shares and what the value is, but when we um, buy some of that common stock back, now it's treasury stock, right? So we buy it back, and we're buying it at $4. But when we sell it back into the marketplace, we're selling it back at 7 So there's an increase of $3 per share. So our uh, 
our total equity will increase by uh, that three dollars per share and so that's an increase and then e stock splits all right um, when you have a stock split prior to the split 990,000 shares of three dollars common three dollar par common stock were outstanding um, there is no uh, when you're splitting stock if you looked at you know this previous exercise for 39 all right there's no change in your stockholders equity all right so there's no effect Because all you're doing is just changing the value of the shares of stock itself. Okay, so um, that's it for that. But let me just take one quick second here. All right, so D, looking at D here on the sale of shares. The solution says some students may argue that the increase in $900 uh, was 300 shares times the $3, but that is incorrect. To see this, examine the entry to record the sale of this, uh, the treasury stock. Okay, see that the two credits to the stockholders, tre stockholders equity account, treasury stock 1200 paid in capital, total $2,100. Okay, right, yeah, I don't know why they, they added that. They just, the uh, authors just made that a little confusing. But if you didn't understand what they're writing in the solution, you know, feel free to, to telephone and speak with an instructor. But uh, my explanation was just was just very simple all right so with that said um i'm going to stop the video here and if again if you didn't understand something you know go back and watch uh the previous two exercises um which uh, which had something to do with you know these different situations and if you still don't you know go back and watch their theory and if you still don't get it then feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor